Breaks the internet. Breaks the internet. This is Tim Cass talking about Rogan and Trump. Last night, Joe Rogan hosted Donald Trump for his 2,219th episode of Joe Rogan Experience. It was probably the greatest podcast ever done. Mm-hmm. I sincerely believe that. To have a former president and frontrunner sit down for a raw three-hour conversation weaving through numerous subjects, one of the most amazing it was, moments. It was awesome. And there was a lot. I, I seriously recommend you listen to the full thing, if you haven't already, was when Donald Trump was talking about property. He was talking about growth. He was talking about the national debt. And he said something where I just went, this guy, this guy gets it. He said... Uh, and, I'll, and I'll paraphrase growth and debt. He says, we want to get the deficit down. We want to get the debt down. But also you got to think about growth there, because if your growth is greater than your deficit or your debt, then you're under levered. And so yeah. I'm like, man, this guy's really thought about this. He knows this stuff. Mm-hmm. Here's a guy who takes in loans, put c- creates buildings, say build buildings. And he knows about debt versus growth. This guy gets it. But there's a lot more there. And I got to say, just right off the bat, it may seem somewhat, I don't know, mundane. But I truly believe the best part of you this understand what he's saying there, right? Was when Joe Rogan and Donald, because if you were able to increase your growth and make it so that substantially more than what, if you make yourself more valuable than your debt, you can pay your debt off faster. Okay, no, I'm okay. So technically, when you take out a loan, you're accruing a debt to start a business or build a building. But if you can, once you sell that or rent it out, make the buildings, especially the for a business, you start making money on that. Mm. If you succeed, okay. you pay it off even faster. Okay. The faster you grow, the more you can, you're worth, the smaller your deficit becomes. The more you value that, the better you grow. And that's just the basic. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's more intricate, and somebody can be like, that's not exactly what it, uh, Obviously, it's more in-depth and intricate. I'm just trying to say it in the simplest terms. Okay. I can, I can understand that. Donald Trump, we're talking about boxing and MMA. And the reason for it is that's when you truly see just two guys talking about something they're passionate about. It was amazing. You know, when Donald Trump is talking about tariffs, he's talking about environmental policy. I'm impressed. There's there's uh, certain circumstances where Trump doesn't answer a question very well, but he picks it up very well. And I'll explain. But when I saw that MMA UFC, I'm just thinking, you know, these are two guys and they're just shooting the ish. You know what I mean? But I will say this, too. And then we'll uh, we'll jump through some of these news stories and, uh, and some clips for you. There's one instance where Donald Trump is talking about ending the war in Ukraine. And Joe says, what would you do to end the war? And Trump meanders a little bit and he says, look, you know, I know them very well. I know them very well. I, I could get this done. I truly believe it. And Joe says, yes, but what would you do? And Trump says, I'm not going to say it for the sake of sounding smart to five people in a room. I'm, I, 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 if I told you what I wanted to say to these men, I would not be able to do it. But trust me, I truly believe that if I, I called up, so, uh, I called up Putin, I called up him, <laughs> and he was referring to Zelensky, I could get this war done as uh, uh, there be peace as president elect. And I I, I'm that. impressed by that. What the left is going to say, the liberals are going to say, is he has no answer. He's right. I agree. Could you imagine if Trump comes out and he goes, I'm going to call up Putin and tell him ABC one, two, three, and then Zelensky one, two, three, four. You can't do that. That's 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 ridiculous. You can't publicly announce your negotiating tactics. And so but Trump picks it up well by saying, I'm not going to just blurt it out for the sake of sounding smart to five people. See, doesn't but that make sense to have this? Everybody wants to know exactly what he's going to do to stop the war. Why would he tell us exactly what he's going to do that he wouldn't be able to do it? Okay. Is that different than having an economic plan? Well, yeah, that's foreign policy. Being able to stop. No, no, stop I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just being the asshole and asking that question. I'm, I'm always going to do that. So, the only reason why I'm making the comparison, that I get it's foreign policy to a war. I'm just, I'm, I, so I get that. You don't want to, you don't want to acknowledge. You don't, you don't want to put all your, 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 um ideas out there for a foreign policy because another yeah that's not an idea why would you say what you're going to say to putin and Zelensky to stop the war why would i sit there and tell you my my tactical plan to stop a war no i get it you don't you don't want yeah, I, you I don't know, want but, that but you're comparing it to an economic plan which he's talked extensively about he's given details he's actually given things about what he wants to not do and do 
So I don't understand what you're comparing. What you're comparing? Something that he it's can't prob- talk about, but so something else he has. I'm so not, it, it's it's a. I'm probably, not trying to be an asshole. No, but, it's probably a really bad comparison, but because I can understand if you're trying to compare it against something he hasn't talked about or mentioned, but he's gone in depth about what he wants to do economically to bring jobs and everything back to this country. Uh, well, I was going to compare it to when people get mad at Harris not giving a detail, but that's not ha- that doesn't have to do with foreign policy. That's about the economic plan. Harris, it, doesn't, Harris doesn't give a detail about anything. It's it's a bad comparison. Now that I think about it, <laughs> you because you, you know because you can give your economic plan for groceries, you can't give your tactical plan for stopping a war. Public exactly. Yeah. So it's it's a bad comparison. Yeah. My brain was thinking too quick. No, I got you on that, but. Sorry if you hear the chewing. I'm hungry today. No, nah, it's, it's all good. <laughs> hey, Alina. Hey, Alina. What up? No, nah, but it just... It was a bad comparison. I admit when I have bad ideas. No, I was just wondering if you thought that he hasn't said anything about his economic plan. No, no. I was going to compare it to Kamala because when people get mad that Kamala doesn't fully answer a question. No, I get what you're saying with that. But she doesn't do it. But you anything. can. Yeah, but when it, when it goes with the policies and stuff, she doesn't explain, you know, because that we have the right to know... What you gonna um, do to change. make our lives better? Yeah, exactly. In how, this country, how you gonna? But when it comes with the war, that's like something that you, you shouldn't know. Top that's room stuff. Compromising, right? Uh-huh. Is that, it compromising? Sorry. It's not even compromising. No, how to, I mean, not compromising. Um, we're, we shouldn't be. We're not going to be privy to what world leaders are talking about and how to negotiate and stop and talk about war. They're not going to go back to their people and say, "We just had this conversation. Here's what we said, word for word." Fair enough. You can't compare groceries to war. No. <laughs> that's fair. No, that's fair. You don't want to give oh, away your skills. Oh, you're off work until the 5th? Damn. That's nice. Nice. Take advantage really nice. of that vac- little, little vacation right there. Mm-hmm. You can compare groceries to bringing in products from overseas. That would be a comparison. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. You could talk about war and defending your own border. <laughs> that would be a fair comparison. That's fair, yeah. That's fair. Groceries and uh, groceries and war don't go together. Yeah, not really. Not really. Unless the uh, war is preventing groceries. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, there that's, you go. There you go. Right? Three hour raw conversation, no notes, jumping from topics. Uh, incredible. You you take a look at what's going on with Kamala Harris, and here are the rumors. The rumors that I've seen reported, and I say rumors because there's different reporting going on. She said she had a scheduling conflict and other reports suggest that she had stipulations about what Joe could talk about. And Joe refused, yeah. which, you I know, he did. Yeah, there's no way you're going to have stipulations friends, on what you I can think and the can't most talk important about. thing for me to say is clearly Joe Rogan is voting for Donald Trump. He talks about RFK Jr. And there's this really great moment where Donald Trump is saying, uh, he's like, you know, Elon gave me this great endorsement. You should do it, Joe. And Joe just starts laughing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Take a look at this. So I want to show you some of the highlights and break down for you where, where we're at. Some people are saying this is it. This conversation sealed the deal for so many people. I mean, they spent a portion talking about the fascism propaganda, the Hitler propaganda. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Joe's like, well, they just call you Hitler. I mean, it's insane. There was a panel done. I think it was Mark Halperin. I could be wrong. But you have all these undecided voters. Yes, they exist. Very few of them. And this guy's like, look, I I think the reason I'm being pushed towards Trump is because the Democrats just keep saying he's Hitler. It's like they go to Hitler right away. And I'm like, this is this is absurd. And uh, the journalist who's holding the panel again, I think it's Halperin, says, do you think that this rhetoric is helpful for the country? And everyone on the panel just shakes their head. No. Yep. Yet people don't care. You can't just say Trump is Hitler over and over and over again. It's not real. It's not true. But I'll show you the takeaways, some of the big takeaways. And I want to play for you this amazing clip. Donald Trump actually said, Joe Joe Rogan asked him, always been a fan. Do you really want to get rid of the income tax in exchange for tariffs? And and Trump's like, yeah, why not? Look at, look at, this is incredible. Trump is like, you go back to the 1880s when we were extremely wealthy and it was based off tariffs. Tariffs were funding the government. That's how we were doing it. And we were one of the top nations in the world. And you look at how we're operating now. It's incredible. He's he's basically talking about how if the people of this country have more to spend, then growth and development skyrocket. But when the government bogs them down with mass spending for government interests, it inhibits economic activity. Funding everything through tariffs because people want the American people as customers 
results in better funding from the government. But internally, you can grow rapidly. There's a lot to break down here. And I'll play mm-hmm. some, some of these clips from Donald Trump. Before we get started, my friends, head over to TimCast.com. Click join us. Become a member. We've got the big reveal. Josh Sider, his social experiment. You may have seen it. He was uh, claiming for five months to be trans. And then uh, uh, he wasn't. And so we have some, a behind the scenes look. <laughs> and uh, as a member, you'll get access to the Discord community. So if you want to hang out with people who are like minded mm-hmm. and join the pre shows, the after shows, and all of the other shows, we knew that you, Come on. you can hang out with people, maybe uh, help build a project. You didn't, you, you didn't know that that was fake? Who the fuck is Josh Setter? He was on The Bachelor. He was the one that was pretending that he, uh, he was. Um, he was he, trans? He was making fun of uh, Dylan Mulvaney. Yes, he was pretty much. He was doing a social experiment. He said, "Yeah." Oh yeah. Okay. All right. You want to make a comic book or write a song? You've got a community here that is on board, ready to ready to help you guys out. Go to timcast.com, become a member. Also, go to castbrew.com and buy Cast Brew Coffee, Appalachian Nights, uh-huh. everybody's favorite, and of course, Ian's Graphene Dream. Check Gotta it out. get that. Well, let's uh, let's start with this. Yeah. Fox News says Trump appeared on Joe Rogan's podcast for nearly three hours. Here are the top moments. Just say three hours, guys. It was it was two hours and fifty eight minutes and thirty seconds or something, right? Brown it up. Trump mm. tapes Brown the it. Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Absolutely incredible. Trump asks Rogan to explain why he's gotten bad publicity. So Trump is like, I don't know. I, it, this is so incredible. It Trump was is funny. Like, I just get more publicity than so many people. And then Joe goes, well, you said a lot of wild ish. You did. Mm-hmm. And then Trump laughs. You know, I think it was um, it might have been Jack Posobiec. I can't remember who, who, who commented. this. So sorry if I'm not giving you the proper credit. But uh, they said an X. Yeah, no way. Kamala Harris has a lot of crazy stuff, too. And she doesn't get the publicity. But I think it's fair to say when Trump comes out and says, we're going to get rid of the income tax. You know, tariffs are better than uh it's something that's going to generate publicity. The New York Times, look at this. Trump flirts with the ultimate tax cut, no income taxes at all. I mean, yeah, that's pretty up there. When Kamala Harris says something like, you know, the thing that we need to talk about is something that needs to be talked about by everyone. And I'm going to focus on these things that we're supposed to be talking about because we can't not <sighs> talk about them. And you're like, yeah, that's a wild thing to say because you said nothing, but there's yeah. nothing there to write on. What am I going to write? <sighs> Kamala Harris says she wants to do a thing at some point that I think that needs to be done. Not interested. While explaining the process of choosing political nominations once he got in office, Trump discussed his initial appointment of John Bolton, who served as White House National Security Advisor. In 2019, Trump fired Bolton, who remains a staunch critic. Yeah. Trump described, oh, it was so amazing. It was so amazing Mm -hmm. when uh, Joe says he hired bad people. And then Trump is like, you know, I I, I made, he gets asked if he made any mistakes. And uh, uh, Trump is like, some people I probably shouldn't have hired. And Joe is just like neocons. And then Trump goes, neocons. Oh, they're bad people. (laughs) Very bad people. Yes, he did. (laughs) Every libertarian started screaming and throwing their hats in the air. Here's a couple more. Rogan tells Trump the rebels are Republicans now. And Elon Musk agrees. He says the rebels are Republicans now. Like you want to be invisible. You want to be punk rock. You want to like buck the system. You're conservative now, Rogan said. That's how crazy and then liberals are now pro-silencing criticism. You know, I want to pull up this tweet from uh, Mehdi Hassan, which perfectly exemplifies why this podcast was needed and why people are sick of the corporate press machine. So uh, here we go. This is a tweet that I saw retweeted by Crystal Ball. Mehdi Hassan says, Trump to Rogan. The liberals are now pro-silencing criticism. They are pro-censorship. Then he says Trump at a a rally in Michigan just hours later, 60 minutes should be taken off the air and CBS should lose its license. You see, Mehdi Hassan knows what he's doing. He is manipulating you. Take a look at this first response. Jefferson's violin. I wonder who that is. He says they deceitfully cut an interview answer of Kamala from another question and pasted it to to a different question. According to the FEC chair, yes, they could lose their license for this. Did you know they did that? Uh, Beneath it, Kevin Bass, PhD, MS, says he's anti-censored. CBS in their interview asked her a question, cut her answer from that question, took Uh her answer from another question, and put it there instead. So they copy and paste? Damn. They call it selectively editing. So they took her answer from another question because it sounded better for the question that they asked. That's like me asking you if the sky is blue and you going on some tirade about it being dark at night and something else. 
And then I ask you if that bag is blue, and you're talking about, yeah, it's a very nice That's blue bag. Ian, in FEC regulations, if you are supposed to be a news organization, yeah. to give, yes, it's illegal for you to cut a question. When, the, when you cut the answer from a question and take it from another question that was asked and put it in place of the question that was asked and then aired it as if that's what she had said to that question. That's fucking wrong. Because it made her look worse for her actual question, her answer. So, if I, Ian, it's like me, again, if I ask you what you did yesterday. Okay. And you give me an answer about how you, I don't know, beat the hell out of somebody. <laughs> Damn. Okay. But then I ask, how was your, how, what did you do at the game last month? And you talk about how you went to the show, you saw that they played a great game and everything else. Yeah. Doesn't that sound better about what you did yesterday? Which answer would you <laughs> want to be aired? Well, not the one about beating the hell out of somebody, but like. I get why it's bad. I'm just saying, why is it illegal? Like you just switch. It's, it's like it's illegal because they're they're like because you have to have a license to be on on air. Yeah, you're supposed Excuse to be me. to be able to be a news organization. To be, you have a specific requirements you're supposed to meet when you're airing this to the public, especially for a presidential campaign. Okay, All right. so it's more unethical. Super unethical. Yeah, so it's on. Un- <laughs> so it may not be illegal. It's just super unethical. No, it's borderline illegal because that's a campaign contribution. Oh, okay. They're okay. Ru- she's running for president of Got the United you. States. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what if we were it, okay? So you're say, lying to the people. You put wrong, the wrong information. And it's different if you and I do it. We're not running for anything to be in charge true. of power. Oh, when this video go up. Oh, when this video goes up. Why is that illegal? Bro. When this video goes up. It's technically an illegal campaign contribution. I, I get you now. I get you now. When you're right. supposed to be a fair and free news organization, straight down the middle saying just giving what she says. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. You're manipulating the, fair public's, enough, fair. the yeah. public's view of her. Uh, okay. If she gave a stupid, incoherent answer, that's what you should tell the people that she said. The stupid, coherent answer so they can see the person they're going to vote for. I, I see you read. I... <laughs> oh, man. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, if it was a campaign ad, I can I'm understand a... why she did it because she paid for herself. It's not a news organization trying to give us information about why she's running to be the leader of the free world. Fair, fair, fair enough. I don't know. I got I, I to get off my bullshit today. I'm just it's not even that. You look, <laughs> a lot of the times you look at it as a generality like it's affecting all of us when it's like she's running to be the president of the United States. Uh, no, yeah. It's, it's Not president of your local school board. School board. Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. I feel, I feel, I feel she, you. She's not trying to become a member of the Celtics coaching staff. <laughs> sure, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. You got I, me. You got I, me. I, you I know, think you, you got him now. I think yeah. you got him. <laughs> but CBS manipulated. I love you, Ian. I really do. <laughs> to interfere with the election. CBS broadcasts on public airwaves, so is therefore breaking the law. But go ahead and lie to your followers as usual. I am sick of these people lying. Lying. Donald Trump and Joe Rogan are Welcome talking to the about world, big bro. tech platforms that allowed government intelligence agencies to run back doors so that you could uh, spy on people. There have been lawsuits to yeah, be proven that. that the Biden administration was pressuring X, formerly Twitter, they're pressuring, I should say, Twitter at the time to shut down people over their COVID views. This is overt censorship of individuals. Donald Trump is specifically referring to 60 minutes fabricating content to promote a candidate. Yes. These are totally mm-hmm. different things, but they lie. There you go. So right now, I'm not so sure I'd agree with uh, that there, Joe Rogan, when he says the rebels are Republicans Tim gets now, passionate. Because I think we're right. You know, like, and we are sh- the thing that just, like, don't get me wrong. I get everybody wants candidates to tell the truth. I get that. Ian, In a perfect, I get it. Ian, it's not the candidate. It's the news network <laughs> lying for the candidate. Yep. 
The desperation, man. It's when you look up information and you're trying to get information and the news network mm-hmm. is lying to you about what you are what you should be thinking instead yeah. of giving you the actual information about the person. Again. Okay. It's one okay. thing if it's a Kamala Harris paid ad that she is doing. It's a whole nother thing when it's CBS who's trying to be giving you an interview about the candidate so you can learn information on her and not giving you said information. Okay. That's technically a campaign violation because it's an impromptu campaign violation. They're not supposed to help promote either candidate. They're supposed to give you information on the candidate. Okay. Okay. So he's not mad that Kamala's lying. He's mad that the news network is covering up for Kamala lying. Okay. Okay. When, when the you, news should be saying is, she's is, lying. When it's exactly. painted, okay. When it's okay. The news is supposed to be informing us. Got you. Telling us the truth. You know the. It facts, used to be where the we truth. the news would tell us when they're lying. But now it's. Now the news is lying for them. <sighs> Games change, man. What what's that saying? Don't hate the player, hate the game. <sighs> but the game is rigged when it's only working one sided. How can you play the game when the game is the unbiased news media attacks one side to help promote the other side so the other side can win? Yeah, that's why you gotta be careful what you read up in this motherfucker. Like, oh, was she? This season, bro. She's a this, bro. She's the a season of Earth is just getting. Oh, it's they definitely do, wild. They do it's whatever they wild. want to do. So again. Before Donald Trump decided to run for president, everybody loved this man. There's everybody you, loved him at all until he was in power, though. 2016, when he ran as a Republican. If he mm-hmm. ran as a Democrat, you think he'd, you think he'd be going through this? If he ran as a Democrat, no, I don't think he'd be going through this. But I would like to you? know, like. This is why I hate fucking politics. Because then you got to think of like six, like 10,000 different variables at once for this shit. Do you think if the light was shown as bright as it has been on Kamala Harris as it has been on Donald Trump, you think she, she'd be coming through as unscathed as Trump? Well, I think... So, Trump's not even a Republican. No, he's a 90s Democrat. He, he is. He's a 90s Democrat. He, he said that on... He pretty much said that in Trump. Yeah, he, he's podcast. a 90s Democrat. But like, I do agree. I I do see the pattern that no one, no everybody was fucking with him before twenty sixteen. Before twenty, everybody was fucking with him. Black, white, it didn't matter who the fuck you were. Everybody was fucking with Trump before twenty. You saw the clips of him on the View. Where yeah, yeah everybody, kissed everybody him as he said. Yeah, that. everybody was fucking with him before twenty sixteen. Now everybody hate him. The video of Minka Przinsky hanging all over. Yeah, him? yeah, yeah. As she was with Joe. Yeah. No. Yeah. It was. Joe himself drooling as he's sitting on the the dais. <laughs> Man, this is why I hate politics, bro. And now he's Hitler. I hate this game. I hate politics, bro. <laughs> I would never want to do this. But even you were considering not voting for Trump because he's a Republican. I don't like either party. Yes, but you're not voting for the party. Even Trump has said he's got to get rid of the the uniparty neocons. But he's running because it's a two-party system and you can't win. (laughs) He explains it in the... I don't know if you got to that point in the podcast. He explains in the podcast, you can't run as a third party in this country because it's a two-party system. You have a Democrat and Republican. You have to be under one of the two-party tickets. So A, you can either run as a third party, spend a lot of money and lose, or you can try to change the party's ethics from within. Sure. And you can mold and change one of the parties. My question is, do you think the Uniparty will ever get like... It's in the process of being dismantled. Because you got guys like Matt Gates, Byron Donalds, Jim Jordan, J.D. Vance, who was, was in the Senate. Huh. You have got... You, it's happening right in front of us.
The Republican Party used to be the party of big business. Now it's the party of trying to bring American jobs back to America. Because it's the party for all business, not just big business. And that includes the worker. Because if you don't have businesses operating in this country, there's no work for any of the workers. Sure, I'm just, I guess I'm just wondering, like, are we... We're not voting for Are a we party. painting We're all Democrats with the same brush, or are we just painting the big Democrats? I'm not painting the people. I'm painting the politicians, because all the Democrat politicians... No, that's what I mean, the politicians. Yeah, well, yes, that's what I mean. because they all vote in lockstep, no matter what, 100% right behind each other. It's the Republicans that are arguing amongst themselves about policy and what they want to put forward. But as soon as the Democrats say they're going to do something, they all get in line right behind their leadership and don't challenge anything. When's the last time you've seen discourse? AOC tried, had one conversation with Nancy, and all of a sudden she was all for war. All of a sudden she was for funding Ukraine and everything else. When she was in New York running, she didn't want any of that money going anywhere. Now it's up. Oh, whatever Democrats want, rubber stamp it. Here we go. Sorry. No, you're good. Gotta keep my shit up. When's the last time you've seen a Democrat actually stand up some, for something? Some, some people can't handle the pressure. No, it's easier to get, go along than to get along. Yeah, some people just can't. Some people fall, fall under pressure. And then you got guys like Matt Gates that get a, a Speaker of the House removed. Oh, Kevin. <laughs> he left Kevin McCarthy. Kevin state. McCarthy shot himself in the foot on and, his and, damn self. And the best thing Matt Gates did was have him standing there with a billion dollars in IOU. He couldn't fill. McCarthy got... McCarthy got removed because he was writing checks that his ass couldn't cash. Yep. That's why McCarthy got kicked out. Yep. He was making promises that he couldn't hold. As he should have. But again, you still haven't given one good reason not to vote for Donald Trump besides the party he's he's running under. When he's trying to actually get I out mean, those personally, I didn't I I mean it's No, I'm saying you haven't given one reason one way or the other. You haven't given one to a reason to vote for Kamala. You haven't given one reason not to vote for Donald Trump. To me, this just, I, I, when all the people you said you would vote for are standing behind Donald Trump, and I, one of them just joined the Republican Party. I, yeah. to, for me, for me, on the thing that I can't get behind, at least on the right side, I wasn't. I to me personally, I wasn't for the overturning of Roe v. Wade. I wasn't for. Why he returned it to the states? The only reason why I didn't like it is because I didn't like. Maybe maybe it's not that I didn't like the I didn't. I don't like the aggressive. Not the. I don't like how there's no like wiggle worm in some states for like. No exceptions, even for rape and incest. Well, that's, I I don't agree with that. But there is exceptions in every state for rape or incest. I every, thought in Texas and in Georgia, you even every, no, even in those states, I believe there for rape and incest, there is exceptions for those. Those were lies that the, that they tried to pursue. So the, so 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 okay. So in every it, so Roe v. Wade got returned back to the states. Yeah. Okay. I'm saying I'm pretty so sure. So all the states who want abortion limitations, I believe ninety almost all of them have it's to the heartbeat. As soon as there's a heartbeat. I think those are the most extreme ones. Creo or Alina, help y- y'all ladies. Let it's or so I need someone. I need. Uh, I I just want to know how correct it, we it's are. It's the states that in Ca- it's California, New York, Maryland, that allow abortions in the seventh, eighth, and ninth month. Not just for need to happen, and we've been over this. Just because you need to abort the baby, if you take the baby out of the mother, it'll survive. Why kill the baby to remove it? Mm-hmm. What is the purpose of killing a baby to remove it? So I'm not saying that's not happening. How often is it happening? One is too many. No, I and I'm like I said, I'm just looking at everything. I'm 
Why allow it at all? We would have to like research it. Yeah, it. like when was the last time they killed a? I just want to like when was the last time that happened? The media is not going to tell you when it happened. Actually, that's what I was going to say. They don't document that stuff, right? No, no online or I. Not that I know of, I'm not going to speak, but I know that there is actual people that have called up to a, a clinic saying they're eight months pregnant, yeah. asking if they can get an abortion done, that they just don't feel like they can buy financially to take the baby. Oh, yes, here's your appointment. Come right in. Yeah, that was crazy. The woman was like crying after the call. And and, and, the, and, the, and uh, the one that was talking was like nonchalant, like... Oh, you know. The fact that, that that conversation happens means it happens more often than it should. Yeah. I don't want to get derailed on an abortion conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I know I know you're talking yeah. about the Roe v. Wade, but what about the states that allow you to kill in the 7th, 8th, and ninth month? Why is there zero restriction? So why aren't people allowed to have a problem with that? I can see you having a I can see you having a problem with that. I just to me, I didn't like at six weeks. Why? There's a heartbeat there. Some women don't know they're pregnant at six weeks though. There's a heartbeat there. But how do you how you're, you gonna, at that point you're killing a person. But how do you What if okay, so what if a woman Okay, are you are you okay with abortions if there's medical complexity? Oh yeah, that's 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 there's nothing you can do about that. Like the woman shouldn't have to be dying on the table. That's be, that's yes. Uh, okay, okay, that's an uh, that's obvious. Okay. No, no, but no reasonable person will ever argue that. Which is why most re, most liberals and Democrats want to <laughs> bring up rape, incest, or medical stuff. Which again, if there's a medical complication with the mother. At eight, seven, eight, or nine months, the baby's got to come out either way. Why kill it to remove it? When, yes, if you have to prematurely take the baby out, take the baby out. But why are you not doing everything you can to save the baby and the mother? Why is it automatically, okay, kill the baby? What if you can't save it? Then you can't save it, but that's not an abortion. That's that's called a medical tragedy. Okay. You're a doctor. You, you got to. If you're you, trying you're to there. save the life of both, obviously the mother is yeah. the most important. But okay. if you can save the baby in the process, why is the first option kill the baby so we can save the mom? When at that point, most mothers who want to have the baby. Or trying to say, save the baby, I don't care about myself. I would say 8 out of 10 moms are saying, save the baby. Do everything you can to save the baby. If they're that far along. I have no stories of, of mothers who have refused chemotherapy for cancer because it would have killed their baby. And they waited long enough to be able to have the baby. So, the fact that there is no mother that... At seven, eight, nine months, that is willingly killing a, mother, a baby like that. That is insane. But to sit there and say, well, I don't think, oh, he left, and now I'm financially unstable. I can't have this at eight, nine months. There's way other options besides, well, kill this now. At what point does it become you're murdering a person that never had a chance to have life? I see what you're saying, but I could have sworn there were states where you can't get one, get an abortion. Lies. For, I, I could have sworn Lies. there was a state. Lies. That's not a thing? No. Someone got to let us know in the comments. Unless I'm wrong know. in that, but I am pretty sure I that I every, swear there were states every, that weren't every allowed single, it. Every single, that might have been in, in the first iteration of any bill, but any one that passed. Because to was, me, was, that's where you fucking lost me. And again, if it happens in one or two states, you don't live there. I, I'm, I know, but I'm just that's shitty. Well, well, you get you 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 get forced against your will. You get raped. You end up pregnant, and then the law says we don't give a shit. You got to have it. To well, me, that's fucked up. Well, wasn't there? I don't disagree with that. Isn't there um, states that there are states that allow it all the way up until birth? Well, where are they? There was like discussion about. 
uh, women leaving the state to go to another state to have an abortion. Yeah. And certain states are calling that murder. That the mother will be arrested if they do that because you were killing a person. But what so, if- All right, so wait a minute. So you're allowed to do it, but you'll get arrested? If you return back to your home state, I'm pretty sure. But if you do it in your home state, let's just say if you end up doing see this is this state. is this is why Tim says even that Tim and why I agree with Tim on certain points that it does need to be a, not a national ban, but we need to decide if the unborn are persons or not, and when you become a person. To and me, you become a person when you're born. When you have oh. a heartbeat, you're, you're no. Like, but I I get the heartbeat thing. How? I do. How do you how how can you sit there and say that when a per, when a baby premature or a C section at seven months and a mom still sitting there with nine months? How is the seven month baby that was taken out of the womb different than the nine month old that's still inside the baby? No, so I I get that. I, that's and my I, point. And how, I get how that. is it? How is it different? And I think the difficult part about about it is because when a person is like, who was the dude that I saw? Oh, forget his freaking name, but he was like, if you're looking at when. He he he. When you're looking at person, how do you fucking explain? It was like personhood versus. I'm I'm explaining it the wrong way, but when he said like when a person is, like it's called birthday for a reason. The day you were born is the day you came into the world. Yeah, but you can be you your birthday can be picked. Not. A C section can be picked. Yes, yeah, but they. Yeah, so yeah, but yeah, but some you don't always have to be like not every baby has to be C sectioned out. Not every single one, but again, if there's medical complications where it has to happen. Okay, so do you think like okay, maybe I should rephrase it. Do you think life starts the day you were born or the day you were conceived? I believe it was the day you were conceived, but but I'll concede when you have a heartbeat. See, I'm different. I don't think life starts when you're conceived because you have no conscientiousness. Take a show, show, look at a picture of a fetus at six weeks and tell me that's not a person. Is there is there con is there con like conscientiousness at six at six weeks though? Is a person sitting in a coma conscious? No. So should we kill them? I'm not saying I'm not saying you should kill, but what I'm saying is if a person's sitting in a coma and there's no brain activity, is there brain are, is there brain activity? To for me, this, if you for don't, the sake, no. If if to me, if you have no brain activity and a machine's pumping your heart, you're dead. If if you're brain dead, you're dead. But a baby who's being formed, how, how is see, it? Why, not, see why this is why I think it's a difficult conversation. I don't think it's black and white. There have been babies that have been born with just without with barely any conscious of a brain. They have zero brain activity, but they have a heart beating. Whew. Birth defects happen. That's true. Birth defects. Do, I, see, I think. I, see, to me, it's it's hard. It's hard. Some people think life starts at conception. Some people think life starts the day you were born. I think that if you have to cut up and slice open and take out pieces, arms, legs, hands, Rooms, feet, yeah, it is. And you're I'm, murdering it, a person. And and I'm not disagreeing with you. I think that is fucked up. I don't think there's anything amazing about that. I don't. So why should you be allowed to do it? But not be allowed to to go kill the guy that punched you in the face. You have more of a reason to attack someone who did harm to you than something that's growing that has nothing that can't even speak for itself. That has no say whatsoever in what you're about to do. You're taking away any chance that they even have at life by even not even allowing them to get to life. I, I I see what you're saying too. I do see what you're saying too. <laughs> to it, it, it can't be an all or nothing approach. Because to by, me, it's because if by that approach you're okay with abortion all the way up until you're coming out of the womb. I I don't want to say I'm okay with that, but also I'm not going to be the guy who says like I'm not trying to tell a woman what she can and can't do with her body. You're killing another body. But, okay. The woman, she made this choice to have sex to get the child inside. So her. I get that. 
I get that. I so 100% get so that. So you're removing her from any of the consequences of her decision by allowing her to kill the baby anytime because it's her body. So, I'm, I, so, so I, I, I get what you're saying. I do get what you're saying. Abortion at eight months is fucked up. I'm not. I'm. It, it, abortion at six months is fucked up. But abortion after after the heart is beating is fucked up. Yeah, because it's living. It's life. How about even the, after, so, even at four weeks, when a kid, can a fetus feel anything at four weeks? How about you ask the person that's actually carried a person let, inside her? That's true. Can like so so Liz, what do you Liz, what do you think? As the only woman, what do you think? No, I understand why people, you know, have that mentality. I I used to have that mentality. It's just... It's hard to explain. When, When you... When... When it reaches a certain certain month, so you start feeling the kicks and stuff like that. It's it's living. It, it, no matter what, from from the start, it has life. The baby has life. The fetus has life. It, it's the the thing is is it's like a like a because you don't feel it yet. Mm-hmm. You don't. You don't feel it moving or nothing like that. So it's like, it's like nothing to people. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But once you start, once you, your belly starts getting bigger, you know, women's belly starts getting bigger. And then they start, you know, you start seeing like the elbows or, or whatever is the elbows or the fists. And, you know, you start feeling moving. And, it, and I forgot how many months is of when you start feeling. So what if it's like three weeks? I think it's right at about three or four weeks. Right so what if months. what if a woman has an abortion at three weeks? That's before the six week mark, which a lot of places are at fifteen weeks. Florida's at six. Yeah, I know Florida's at six. Florida's I'm, at six. They're 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 on a heartbeat pill. I don't disagree with that. And the people of Florida got to vote on that. People of Florida decided that. Well, but when is- so if Floridians made their decision, why why should people up in New York or Connecticut or Massachusetts decide what Florida Floridians should do? And that and and see, I think that that's what makes it even tougher too. So I get the part of returning it to the states. I do. I mean, and as shitty as it is, New York has made their say. California has made their say. I still find it murder. But the people of that state have decided to allow murder. I don't think it should be. I don't think there should be like a national ban. I don't think that's gonna be the only. And the reason why I think if you nationally ban it, it's not gonna stop people having abortions. Instead, instead of going to a medical provider to do it, they're gonna go into a back alley with a coat hanger. But you'll drastically. That's what's gonna happen. You will drastically reduce it. And I don't in favor of a national ban either. It should be the state's decisions. So to me, if you if you nationally ban it. Women are going to just say, fuck it. They're going to go to the quickest person who can do the procedure with a, a coat hanger in their in, in their bedroom. Yeah, not every, well, not every time. Honestly, most, I, most women I don't do think that. I don't think that small, none of this shouldn't be happening being. because it's a natural thing for a human to have yeah. another human being pop out, okay? And, and then when it comes to religion, religion is a big no-no it, because yeah. it once is... Once it's inside of you, once it's, you know, it's there, it, it sh- you, you shouldn't, you, you, you know, you shouldn't do it. Okay. That's why, just, you know. In 2024, there's plenty of ways, if you don't want to have a kid, there's plenty of ways to protect yourself from having a child. Exactly. That's true. I agree with that. So, you shouldn't be absolved from the consequences of your decision for the decisions you make. Because guess what? The best way not to have kids, don't have sex until you're ready. That's true. I I, I, I get I get that point. I do agree with you. You gotta be you gotta be con- like 
make good choices. I, I I do agree with that. So why should somebody else get to die for a decision you made? I I'm just not gonna call I'm 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 not gonna crucify a woman for having an abortion at like um, no, three you, or no, four weeks. No, I'm not gonna crucify you, you should, her. You yeah, you but you're conflating two but. different things. My argument is in the seventh, eighth, ninth month. You keep going back to this three week, and I, you do this a lot in our conversation about this topic. So you like to go to the extreme the, the, the defense. So if you want to talk about eight or nine, eight or nine months, okay. I'm not. No, I'm not for it. But at the same time, if a woman made that decision, that's her, she got to live with that shit. Yeah. You got to if 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 you did that, okay. If a woman has an abortion at eight months. There's nothing I, I I can I can talk to you about it. I can try to console you about it. But at the end of the day, you got to live with that decision. Life's full of choices. Some are hard. Some are not. Some leave you with guilt and remorse. You got to be able to live with the choice that you fucking made. Uh, that's on de- the woman. You definitely have to. And that's a decision. Be speaking that one over with the good Lord. And yeah. Lord. that You got to take that to your grave with you. If you had an abortion at nine months, you got to take that to the grave with you. I still see that as an evil person. Like... Yeah. It, to oh, me, hundred percent. To me, in my, in, in my existence on Earth, it's not. I'm not God. I'm not a higher power. I'm not here to say whether you deserve to live or die. I, I, I'm not just here to. I'm, Women aren't God either, so they should get to decide who gets to live or die just because they're they have a person growing inside them. No, no, they're not. They're not. But at the same time, you got choices. Exactly. You, you know, got it. Whatever you had a choice to wrap it up. You had a choice whatever to take choice a you make. You got to take it up. Whatever higher power you look at at the are, end of the day. You are right on that. You that, that's and that's that's how I see it. But I will never see it a way where you where it's okay for a baby to be killed in the eighth, ninth, or tenth month. And and, and and you know and seventh and month that and I think. I know babies don't go. Me, months, me so it's, it's clear as that me and Vito disagree on certain oh, aspects. Oh yeah, of this. it's definitely on this. But like, I don't hate Vito. No, I don't hate him. I'm still boys with Vito. We, I got no issue with the man. And we're just gonna, yeah, definitely see differently. We just see differently on it, and 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 that's okay. That's okay. Damn, but we only we, ten minutes in. But if we had to make a law around it, you gotta you gotta make a cut off somewhere. Even Roe v. Wade didn't allow past fifteen weeks. It didn't allow past 15 weeks? No. You couldn't kill a baby so was in the 7th, 8th, so or ninth month? So was the problem with Roe v. Wade the federal thing? Yes. Like that, federally, the Supreme Court said, like that, federally. That it was a federal law that certain states who didn't want to have, who wanted to have no abortion couldn't have it. But see, that, see, the only reason why I think that's... <laughs> I, I the only reason why I get concerned about only reason why I get concerned about Roe v. Wade is if it's going to lead to anything further. That's like four months. Like some people think same sex couples should legally not be able to get married. When is are it they going to go after? The that's the only reason. I, that's the only reason I'm asking. That's only like yeah. like where are we going to take it next with the federal versus state? That's all I'm wondering. Where are we going to take it? Well, next? I'd rather the states have more power than the federal government. The federal government should be all powerful. All it's supposed to do is protect our borders. Okay. And make sure the states have everything they need. I think it'll be really shitty if you start having some states say like, "If you gay, you can't be married." Like, don't get me wrong. I'll, like, I, I get it. There's states' rights. To me, but, I think it's fucked up if you can't marry the person you but, want to marry. But that goes against our civil rights laws. True. 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 <laughs> and you already can't. You sure to be. Forcing somebody to do a job for you if they don't disagree. Like the, the whole baking the cake thing for the gay couple. They baked the cake. They just weren't going to write the words they wanted on it. Because it goes against their beliefs. Their beliefs. You can't force somebody can't to do for, something. Yeah, you can't force somebody. That's, that's true. Just like that's why healthcare can't be 100% free. You can't force a doctor to operate on you. I don't think healthcare should be free. I think it needs to be affordable. I think general basic healthcare should be free. Yeah, like if you got a cough or something, 
That, that shit should, should be free. You break your arm, that should go get and taken care of. Care, that's yeah. easy, simple stuff. That's, yeah. You have cancer? I'm sorry. We got to figure this out. But we can't give you free health care. It needs to be way more affordable than it is. Oh, I, I agree, agree with that. Like, people shouldn't go bankrupt if they got cancer. I agree with that. That's ridiculous. But don't you think that insurance would be a lot lower if it wasn't having to cover stuff like a, the flu and a broken arm? Yeah, we got we we got to figure out a way. There's got to be a better way to cover a, a, a flu and a broken arm. But we can go. We can keep on going. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, got, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my bad, y'all. Let's my, weave on back to the show. <laughs> Yo, I I can't wait to see our comments. Yeah, I, I can't. I don't even get a title. No, no, oh, I, I can't I, wait. I know. I know. When it came to the abortion thing, I didn't explain. It's just it's really hard. I understand both sides. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna ream me and Vito because you didn't talk I, them. I, You're, they're gonna ream no, us. No, no, I I know, but it's just it's really hard for me to explain because I was there back then. I was like I had that mentality. Your headspace like, is like, different like, now. The, like there's. Back then, it was like, oh, there's nothing, you know? Like, it doesn't have yeah. no feelings. It doesn't have nothing, you know? But it's actually starting to grow. It's starting to live, you know? So how else is it going to grow? How is it? It's living. You got to live in order, you know? I don't know how, Damn, how else to was... explain it. But, yeah, that's it. I'm done. Let's do this. Let's continue <laughs> this. All right, Boston, let's go. <laughs> so right now, I'm not so sure I'd agree with uh, that there, Joe Rogan, when he says the rebels are Republicans now, because I think we're winning and we are shutting out the woke, corrupt institutions. Oh, to be shit. fair, until Trump wins, it is true. And it's kind of funny, right? But I don't think it's necessarily fair to say Republicans. It is the right. It is the populist movement. It is MAGA. It is whatever, whatever. It is populism on the right. You got regular people who agree on most of these issues, and then you've got the uniparty Republicans and Democrats and their trash. Yep. Trump says he told North Korea's Kim Jong Un to just relax and go to the beach. Ha ha. Trump discusses Make America Make America Healthy Again initiative. Says he hold, he told RFK Jr. just focus on health. This was really incredible because this is where you get Joe Rogan. Joe is a health guy. Joe, <laughs> Doctor Joe. I always make the joke that um. Yo, uh, shout out to Joe. Look, when Joe was saying RFK Jr. is great and then Trump criticized them and then all these Trump supporters were going after him, I was like, guys, why are you attacking a moderate? See, I was right. Look, I was. Joe Rogan is now here giving this platform to uh, 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 Donald Trump and they had a real conversation and you can tell that Joe is, is uh, he's going to vote for Trump, right? I got to tell you, um, I've had, uh, when I got COVID, I call, I call Joe. It was, uh, it was, it was, it's a wild story. It's a wild time. But, um, Joe is a good dude. I owe him a lot. I do. He, uh, you know, we were talking the other day about the Joe Rogan universe, about the careers that he's launched. There are many comedians and indeed, indeed, the, uh, depth at which this show exists is it's thanks to Joe Rogan. And so I will be eternally grateful. And not only that, but when I got sick with COVID it is Joe Rogan that helped out, not just me, but my entire staff. And when I was having some kind of a, a hip problem, it was also Joe that gave me uh, advice and connected me with uh, some good people and helped me out. Joe is a health guy and he's a good dude. He's you know what, man, it's it's so brutal because of the way the media treats people, Trump, Rogan and, and so many others. And I bring up Trump and Rogan right now because it's just they're they're the limelight. Th these leftists, these Democrats, they insult they insult him. CNN pasted his face green. And I'm like. You know, what, man, I've, I've met a lot of people in my day and I've been backstabbed. I have been lied to. I have been cheated. And then I meet someone like Trump. He's not a perfect guy. But when I meet him for the first time, he's just really nice. And the stories I hear about how he's always trying to help people, the story of uh, his car, he gets a flat tire, a guy helps change the tire. He pull, a guy pulls over and says, can I give you a hand with your tire? Next thing you know, is Trump paid off his mortgage. Mm -hmm. Then you got Joe Rogan. And I can't speak for anybody else. But the <clears> dude <throat> offered to help me and my staff when we were sick. And uh, no one asked him to do that. He offered it because he's a good dude. And, and I'm eternally grateful. But the health stuff is where you really get him. So this conversation, <clears throat> excuse me, was massive. And I think this is what puts, will, will put Joe over the edge in, uh, in this, in, in this uh, choice, right? But take a look at this. Let's go, let's go to this. Trump flirting with the ultimate tax cut. I've got, a, I've got the, the show pulled up here. It's just near the end. Trump tells an incredible story that I want you to hear. You know how to use the power. 
I stopped other wars just by the use of tariffs. I got Macron of France. Good guy. He's like a friend of mine. But he's a wise guy. And he's a person that likes France, and he was going to tax our companies. I say, you, and I sent all the smartest guys. I sent Mnuchin, and they all failed me. And I said, I'll do it myself. And I called him. I said, Emmanuel, you're taxing American companies. We're not going to allow you to do that. Oh, Donald, I cannot do it. There's nothing I can do. It's already been passed. I said, Emmanuel, if you do that, I'm going to put a 100% tariff on your wines and champagnes that come into the United States. And you're going to regret that you ever did it. He said, Donald, please, that's not fair. <laughs> anyway, within about two minutes, he dropped the whole thing. It was <laughs> massive amounts of money against American companies. I have to protect. Um, you see what tariffs can do? So what is France taxing? The didn't matter what they were doing. It, they were taxing. They were going to increase taxes on American goods going into France. They were going to make it almost impossible for goods that we produce to be sold in France. What they double in tax over there? So the so the good is be, the the good is being made here. Yeah, and we're and we're, and we're France sending is putting a, bigger tax tariffs on our products, so French wouldn't want to pay for it. So Donald said, "You're going to raise that on us. I'm going to increase the tariffs on your wines and champagnes by a hundred percent." And that's the wines and the champagnes mm. imported from France. Yes. Okay. That's not so, the wines and champagnes that Americans make. So I can understand. So the white people over here won't buy it. They'll want to. They will prefer the American wines and champagnes, or they'd be getting them. Okay. So oh, okay. I, okay. Hopefully, I'm understanding this correctly. Yeah, that's what. I'm so saying. if the product, so you got an American company that's making cheese. Okay, we're making the cheese here in America, and we're sending it over to France. And we're mm -hmm. and uh we're we're selling it in France. Yes. Okay. Say like Wisconsin yeah. was selling cheddar to France. Okay. So France, since we're selling a product to France, France mm -hmm. is allowed to tax that to some extent because yeah. we're selling it in their country. Yes. So, and then if France makes bread and they're sending it over to America, they're allowed to tax that somewhat because it's their product and they're selling it in our country. Right. Okay, which I think is fair. Right. Um, right now, they were increasing the tariffs while ours was staying at zero. We weren't taxing their products coming in. They were letting them make all their money on it. But they were making it so our products were too expensive to be sold over there. Meaning, American companies, to be able to sell things in France, they would have to go to France to make it in France and stuff. So there has to be a way to have a healthy competition amongst companies both in the country and outside the country. Yes. Because if you don't have a healthy competition between any company, whether it's in America, whether it's globally, no one's going to buy shit. Exactly. They're going to buy the cheapest possible item. They're gonna, yeah, and yeah. That's exactly. And honestly, Alina, no, because if he actually was at any of the Diddy parties... With the amount of vetting and stuff that had been done on Donald Trump, that stuff would have been out very first. I don't think everybody who went to a Diddy party did True, something actually. wrong. Right. Yeah. What did maybe he walk around one at one point was yeah. photographed to people? Yeah, that could have been happening. Because Diddy could have thrown one at Trump Tower for all we knew. Because it's even even Denzel Washington said he's gone to yeah. a Diddy party and but, he said, You leave before midnight. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they did it. Yeah, either. it's it's it it. Honestly, it's fucked up. It's so, the same thing with kind of Epstein. Yeah. Just because someone knew Epstein so, didn't mean they were so sex trafficking. So as it hits midnight, everything is that's, naughty. Supposedly, that's when it that's gets That's what wild. I mean by do I think he was at a Diddy party? He probably that, was. Nice I can see him being at one. What? Right, because he's a high-profile person. Do I think he did anything Epstein-esque at a Diddy party? No. Do I think he did anything like J-Lo? No. Like, yeah, there's, there's plenty of people who have probably gone, probably went to a Diddy party... Opened the wrong door, saw some shit, was like, all right, I'm out. And I'm then left for the night. Yeah, like Denzel. Yeah, like, I, like okay, I'm out of here. But uh, can you imagine what the maids saw? <laughs> 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 the people who got to clean up the show. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> but, but do you see what he's, how Trump Yo, Oh, yeah, business. Yeah, I, I can understand that. You, you do got to have. To me, the thing that's weird is like, the bit, like, for price, like I get the intention of like stopping price gouging. I get the intention, 
But if you're just capping it on what people can can sell, then I'm like, you're how limiting, do... You're limiting business. Because again, we've, we've been over this before. Price gouging is not a thing. Like, you can't just tell somebody you can only sell this for $5. I feel like, I'm like, what? Because, again, just because someone's charging $10 for water, why are they charging that $10? That's true. How much did they have to put in to actually make it that cost? Are there actual people that are going to try and make a shit ton of money and stuff? Of course you're going to get those people. But what happens when the next person comes in and be like, well, they're selling that for $10. I have this for eight. He's got it for eight. I can do it for six. Yeah, you got to compete with somebody somehow. If everybody knows the cap is at six, why would anybody want to deal in that type of business? They're going to they're gonna want to do something else. Yeah. That's true. That that's is true. true. So, But I just mean with the amount of vetting that's been done on Trump, if, there were, if he had actually done something, that would be out by now. I think, yeah. I think that, that would have been out years ago. If, if yeah, Diddy had like, any of that type yeah. of footage Duke on Nation, him, what that would have been out. What's yeah. up, dude? Yeah, you don't know. You just take a chance, you know? American so why doesn't the... So that clip right there is incredible because the media is going to lie to you. These Democrats, they are lying. They keep saying tariffs are a tax on the working class. No, Donald not. Trump is lying to you, blah, blah, blah. I don't think y'all are stupid. I think you understand how tariffs work. But let's, uh, 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 let's, let's, let's break down the manipulations the Democrats are putting forward. So when, the, when Trump says, I'm going to put a tariff on your product, I'm going to put a 100% tax on your wines and cheeses coming from France to America, please, Donald, that's not fair. They say, yeah, all that means is the cost is being passed on to you, American consumer. What they're not telling you is the purpose of the tariff in this instance is to pressure France to drop the taxes they have on our companies. And how the tariff would basically function is France would be unable to to sell the product in this country because a $10 block of cheese would become $20. And American consumers would say, pass, I don't want it. Now, listen, of course that means, but, the, but then the consumer doesn't get their French cheese. It's not fair. Maybe you want your cheap cheese. The point is this. In this regard, it for, it's a negotiating tactic that forces France to play fair. That means there was no tariff. A threat of a tariff happened and ultimately it alleviate taxes on American businesses. We we should have absolute reciprocity. If a country wants to tax our goods, we tax them back. We shouldn't exactly. just be like, you get a free ride from us. But also, let's go a little bit in depth on tariffs and why I actually support Donald Trump's proposals. I'd love to see the income tax gone completely. Now, what does that mean, my friends? If we move to a pure tariff system, that means imported goods will become more expensive for you. And imagine if you got to keep 100% of your income. If you are buying an American made good, it is going to be cheap. But if you want to buy from, a, from China or Mexico, expensive. Understand what that does to this country. Think about it for two seconds. See, they're lying to you because they want to offshore your jobs. Yeah, because it makes them money. labor in China. You know, man, I can't stand these people. We have a skateboard company, The Boonies. Go to booniesHQ.com. Pick up your step on snack and find out board if you'd so like it. These boards are made in America. And then the, all the work done, distribution, everything, America. These are American jobs. And you know what it means? Our skateboards are more expensive. It means our profit margins are less. But I know what it means for a country and for a culture to have good paying jobs and a robust community around what I care about. That is skateboarding. So many of these big companies and they offered this to nope. us, too. They said, Tim, why don't you make your skateboards in China? And I said, no, no. Yeah, but look, it's going to you're going to save 10 bucks a board. I mean, that's profit in your pocket. Why? Because Chinese laborers work for a pittance. I said, no, I know what that means in the long run. Here's what would happen with tariffs. If we run the system on tariffs to fund the U.S. government, there's going to be imported goods. People will want to sell to the American people. It will happen. But it means that in America, someone's going to say, if we want to get our boards made in China, it's going to actually cost us the same or more. Just get them made locally. The, the, the shipping time is shorter. Then 
That company that's based in, say, PA, that makes skateboards, says, I got to hire. I just got a bunch of orders. Americans start getting these jobs. And you know what? Americans get paid more and they deserve to get paid more. But when America, Americans get paid more and more Americans have cash to spend, this raises all ships. So I, I agree. And I think it's ridiculous. They're saying, no, no, allow the big corporations to outsource your jobs right to right offshore there. factories so that the Chinese worker. That is how trickle down technically is, works. Not trickle down. Can he executive order this or does this have to go through Congress? A lot of the well, tariffs are what the president does. That's his negotiation. No, but I mean like eliminating the income tax. That, I think, to make it permanent can go, has to go through Congress. We're going to get Republicans and Democrats agreeing on that? Uh, if you have enough of your constituents behind you, you tell me a guy that's going to keep his his position after he goes and tells his, no, 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 I need your income tax. I'm taking that. When the guy that's going to be running against him, I'm going to vote so you don't have your income tax. And so you keep more money in your pocket. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, who are you voting for? The guy that wants to take more money from you? Or the person that wants to put money in your pocket for you and your family? You're going to vote for the person who wants to take, uh, who wants to give you more money. Party affiliation doesn't matter at that point. Because that That's affects true. you because that mean, affects you personally. I I was I guess I was looking at it the way it's like if a bill gets passed. You know, both Democrats and Republicans yes. have to agree to you, it. You are right. They do have to agree to so it. So I'm like, we're going to get... You will get them agreed to it because, again, the ones that want to stay in power, that want to stay in that seat in Washington... Are going to say, are going to agree to it. Yeah, they're going to agree Look to what's, it. What happened 10 minutes after, Kamala, or after uh, Trump said he didn't want to tax tips? But two seconds later, Kamala's like, yes, no tax on tips. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Because who wouldn't want that? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Now you're going to tell the American people that if they can keep their entire income tax, well, you're not going to have money taken out of your check? Because he's going to make that money up on the goods that are coming in? You know, and that's kind of messed up that um, you're getting tax on the tips because... Uh, that was already... For, for, because uh, what you get paid hourly is less than everybody else in there yeah. when you're a waitress, right? When you're waitering. Am I right? You're right. Because I know that it used to be like freaking like five bucks or something like that back in the day. And I'm like, what? Why? Oh, because they, they, they're getting um, tips. I'm like, oh, okay, I see. But then on top of that, you want to tax the tips? That's wrong. I don't think tips should be taxed. No, no they, should. they shouldn't. I think they shouldn't be. The they tips, I, I don't think your tips should be taxed. I can understand taxing the paycheck. Honestly, I don't even understand why I'm, I'm pa getting taxed in my paycheck. When you're paying a sales tax every time you go purchase a good. You're paying a fuel tax every time you go put fuel in your car. So the money that was already taxed you're getting taxed again when you go spend it on something. Do you know how many times your dollar is taxed before you even get it? That's true. It's, yeah. That's true. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> that's, that's true. I see what you're saying with that too, Alina, by the way. It's just, he ran for president, was president. We know exactly with Bill Clinton and stuff. You would think that more would have came out about it, and even than just whisperings with uh, with Trump. Anything that he has ever been thrown at this guy has been f proven to be false. Y'all think Little Wayne did better than Jay Z? Haven't heard it. Ooh. Haven't heard it. I'm not gonna say better, but I think Jay Z's feature helped complete the song. I'm sure it did. I haven't heard it yet. Who are Welcome back, real. Work for a dollar an hour can get paid dirt, and the corporates, the, the corporations, the big, the, the big wigs are going to get a premium on their profits. Yeah. And then what happens? We don't have medicines in this country. We don't make computer chips in this country. That is ridiculous. 
We need a robust labor force. Otherwise, the country just ceases to exist. Oh, and these powerful interests yep. are extracting from the system to burn it down. So you know what? Shout out to Donald Trump. I agree with him on this regard. So this is uh, this is the, the clip in question. Here you go. It'll Did keep you just companies. float out the idea of getting rid of income taxes and replacing it with tariffs? Well, OK. Were you serious about that? Our, yeah, sure. But why not? Because we ready. Our country was the richest in the relatively in the 1880s and 1890s. A president who was assassinated named McKinley. He was the tariff king. He spoke beautifully of tariffs. His, his language was really beautiful. Uh, we will not allow the enemy to come in and take our jobs and take our factories and take our workers and take our families. You're here. Unless they pay a big price. And the big price is tariffs. Yep. They got to pay a big price. Yep. And it does two things. Penalizes but also makes it much more difficult. And I, I've heard a lot of people say protectionism oh, and trade is wrong. We want free trade. I don't agree. We need to take care of ourselves and this country. We need to make sure that young people, Gen Z, are waking up to find a country in which they will have a home. They can start a family. They can make money, get a job. Oh my gosh, this is so yeah, comfortable. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I just, my husband used to complain. I just saw this thing that funny. supposed. Supposedly, Lizzo tried char char tried to charge Kamala two million to show up to perform. Like Lizzo, what? Lizzo, you, you ain't Beyonce. Let's bring it down. Well, Beyonce probably charged twenty. Huh? You don't need Lizzo that bad. Yeah. Like Lizzo, chill the fuck. <laughs> you, you know what I, mean? I, I get her trying to make Lizzo trying to make some money as an artist, but Lizzo, you not need it that bad. <laughs> Like, like, chill out. Hey, Lizzo showed up though. What'd she get paid? She Did got, she show up? She got. She was there. She must have got the two million. She must have got the two million. Kamala must have paid it. Yeah. Clip going around where Don Lemon interviews this young guy who struggles to articulate his opinions on things, and it's unfortunate. He's he's asked uh, who he's voting for. He says Trump. He says, uh, uh, you know, ac the economy and immigration are big factors for him. But it's clear that he doesn't really know what he's talking about, and it's and, and it makes me a little bummed out. But he says, I get my news from Joe Rogan, Tim Pool, and Stephen Crowder. I avoid the more extreme guys like Andrew Tate. And then Don Lemon says, Isn't Tim Pool extreme? And uh, he's like, Come on, Tim Pool, he's a little extreme. And it's and it's fascinating because I'm like, it's so wild how not extreme I am. And uh, perhaps I'd be better off if I was. But anyway, the kid says, yeah, I don't know. I don't really watch him. He's been doing the clickbait or whatever. And it's like, Sh ah, whatever, dude. But I got to tell you, pretty sure if you were to watch my show and you actually listen to what I'm saying and you, and you stop and think about it, you might have a better response when someone asks you about why you support tariffs. And by all means, I can tell you, I don't know. I'm not an economist. Not at all. But I can understand to a certain degree what Trump is saying. And I agree. See, right now, I have a choice as a as a proprietor of a business to offshore to China, get our skateboards made at a discount. I got I got to tell you, my friends, the Chinese boards are good. I'm not kidding. They are good boards. They sent us samples and they're like, here are the two different board companies that we have available. And I'm like, wow, this board is premium. And they're like, yeah, that's China. I'm like, nope, don't care. And don't get me wrong. The boards we have are still really, really good. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying I was surprised that the Chinese boards were as good uh, as the American made ones. Now, I think the American made ones are still better. They are. <laughs> but I was impressed. I was like, this cheap board came from China and it's that good. I have nothing stopping me but my own moral conscience to mm -hmm. say I will not buy from China. And I save my I could save myself money. What about these other companies? They don't care. They'd knife you in the back in two seconds. Most these big well. corporations. They'll make your drugs. They'll make your, your masks, their PPE, whatever it is that we didn't have during COVID. They'll make it in China for a discount rate at the expense of American jobs and give our labor to another country, create, creating a circumstance where we have no functioning tax base. Social security begins to fail. The country begins to crumble. Now, if only. This young man could articulate that to Don Lemon. Imagine, you know, and I wish, I wish, but, uh, you know, I'm actually rather glad he said he doesn't watch me as much anymore because I'd be really embarrassed if he said I watched Tim Pool all the time, talk about the best show ever, and then he was like, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I can't articulate a single thought. I'd be like, oof, I'm not doing too well in my commentary. But uh, I suppose it's fair to say you can bring a horse to Harvard, but you can't make him learn. 
But we do have some other things to get to because we've got some other clips. Look at this one. So uh, Joe Rogan podcast on X. Might as well poll here, they say. Let's uh, hit the refresh button and see where we're currently at. They said Trump or Harris. 96.4 saying Trump. Oh, sad, isn't it? This one's really great, too. At America tweets, Rogan saying voter ID is the most bizarre argument. Let me just play the clip. Bizarre argument yeah. that I've never seen anybody articulate in a way that's convincing. Because why they, they want don't to cheat. need voter. They want well, to cheat. It doesn't make sense any other way. I've tried to straw man it or I tried to steel man it rather. I've tried to like look at it from a position like why would you not want people to have ID? And a lot of the ideas are cheat. just ridiculous. The cheat. I, you Gavin need an ID to get a driver's license. Okay, but here's now the next step. Gavin Newscomb, one of the worst governors in the world. <laughs> Newscomb. And I used to, frankly, I used to get along, but I don't get along with him now because he's just too, you know, it's just a whole con job. But Gavin Newscomb the other day signed a bill that you are not allowed to ask a person, even ask them whether or not they have a voter ID. Now, what could be if a charitable ask, reason why anybody would Because they want to cheat. That? But that would be the cheat. only thing that makes sense. But that's, Look at this. And I think it was Gallup. Um, might have been The Economist. I'm not sure. They said Again, that. Is there any reason not to ask a person for their ID, ID to vote in an American election? Is there any good reason not to ask somebody for an ID to vote in an American election? Give me a minute, Peter. Give me a minute. I've never heard anybody articulate a good minute. reason you why you should not me show minute. an ID to vote in an American election. I mean, I don't have the idea, but I'm sure somebody does. Every time I, I'm 29 now, since I've Legally, they always ask me for my ID. So why did California make it a law that you can't even ask them for their ID? What is one? Why, why would you not want to see somebody's ID? I'm guessing they're trying to paint it as a form of like discrimination. Oh, they're saying it's racist to ask your ID. Yeah, that's that's my own. That's, they, they've said if, if people are on record on. saying black people can't find the DMV. All you got to do is type. If you live in California, just say, type into the phone. The funniest thing video. Type I've, into the phone and just yeah, on Google the funniest just type videos I've DMV seen address. Was a guy going into New York asking black people, do you know where the DMV is? Pretty much asking if you know how to get an idea. And the guy just started giving him directions. Man. So, again. Everybody got a smartphone nowadays. There's no go to Safari. I don't. If you got an app, app iPhone, exactly. go to Safari. I don't know what the search engine is for Droid for Android. Google, Google, oh, oh, Google. Type, whatever state you're in, type in DMs, DMV, DMV, Texas, DMV. You Florida. can search. How do I get an ID? And it brings you right to wherever you need to get an ID. Yeah, I. So, again. <sighs> Why it's would discrimination, you not want to you know, see an ID? We can't, we can't have this discrimination, man. If you're an American, you have no problem showing your we, ID. We, we can't have this discrimination, Vito. And they won't like you because you're the white dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So this, you, 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 well, you're, help me help you, you're, Vito. You're supposed to be against voter ID. You know what? If you if you don't if you don't want to have voter ID, you don't have to give your ID. Then you know what? You shouldn't have to give your ID if you look clearly look over fucking twenty one years old for alcohol. You shouldn't have to give your ID for that. If you can tell when someone is clearly over twenty one years old, you shouldn't have to provide an ID at a liquor store. Exactly. Or why do why do you need a license to drive? Now nah, we need that. <laughs> why, why do you need a license? Why do you need a show ID when you're driving? Because that way they know that you're you took the classes to know how to drive. Do you pass the test and all that? Yeah, that shows you pass the test. Then we don't have to worry you... about you getting into a wreck. <laughs> it's just well, you, like you, you have you have the the the, the immigrants over here, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, and then. They're uh, they're being allowed to to vote. What in, in California? 
or in uh, I think in certain spots in New York they can vote things too. Okay. I can't remember exactly where else. And who do you think they're gonna vote for? <laughs> Why are they allowing that? Because they're voting for the people that are giving them free stuff. Exactly. And that's wrong. And I listen to M's music. I don't follow. Oh yeah, I'm, I, I I I don't care. What the man votes for. He's open to. He's allowed to have his. Yeah, own that's opinion. what I'm. People wilding about the M and M shit. People wilding. I think he's stupid when it comes to politics, think, but he's a I brilliant think musician. Stupid. But yeah, no, I still love him. But when it comes to politics and that, he sucks. At that. That's all but I like, say. I thought the, the thing that like, I I laughed about so, it because they were like, oh, he's he's voting for Harris. He told you ten years ago he didn't like he, Trump. And Ian and I had this conversation before. M hasn't been in the real world in the past 30 years. M hasn't walked into a grocery store. He has no clue what the hell is going on. And that's and, and that's not his fault, really. No. You know, no, the, no, we, we made him the, but big. That's, but that's the thing. The if man you, can't go to Walmart on his own That's now. what's confusing to me. If you don't know what's going on around your surroundings and stuff like that, you shouldn't why endorse, endorse anybody? Because he, he always just, endorses Democrats. He always has. Yeah, yeah he's I all, and I, which I don't know why people are shocked about now. Well, you know, you know why he Detroit. he needs to sit down and 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 find out why Fifty Cent likes Trump. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Fucking if Joe Rogan and, and Trump broke the internet, imagine Eminem and Trump sitting down. That'd be crazy. That would, that be crazy. would break the internet. But at the same time. Y'all got to stop being pissy at people who vote for what they want to vote for. Yeah, people are going to be stupid. Y'all got to stop being pissy about that. If if, if that's what's going to p- make you mad and ruin your day, get, like, get over that. I understand how you want neither, but at least Trump's actually got good people behind him right now. He's got RFK Jr. behind him. He's got Tulsi Gabbard, who joined the Republican Party, by the way. She was a Democrat. Y'all forced her out. Yep. She was supposed to be the face of the Democrat Party, but they didn't like that she had a mind of her own. D to so, vote. I like the people standing behind Trump at this point, not just Trump's policies. Justice League. That's fair. He's got good people around him this time. Yeah, he does. Not just a bunch of neocons trying to tell him what to do. Where was it when we were watching where, like, the Democrats just might... No, it, we, it the video wasn't saying that. We were saying that. As in, like... They might just let him have his four year, four more years, so then he can't run again. Was that us saying that? Yeah. They might just try to. They might just say fuck it, and then just and then just the regroup in twenty twenty eight. Which they they're going to be running against Tulsi Gabbard now, so good luck with that. Hmm. She's going to be a very formidable voice in this political movement going forward. It's because Democrats cheat. I mean, that's it. That's really it. This is, oh, I, I did have the Mehdi Hassan thing pulled up. So uh, here we go with the uh, current poly market presidential election winner. Trump is sitting at about 64% to Kamala Harris is 36. Big moves, big moves. And of course, the balance of power, the plurality at 48% suggesting the Republicans are going to sweep. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel like Joe Rogan may have just uh, signed the deal. In the podcast, Rogan says, uh, you know, uh, Trump says like, oh, you finally, is this why you called me up and had me on? And Joe says, as soon as you got shot, I was like, I got to have this guy on. And I feel like, um, I feel like, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. And I, I, you know, I I, I contemplate some of these things, saying these things about uh, certain people that, you know, I know and consider friends because it's not like I'm trying to insult anybody, but I I, I do feel like it may be irksome to a lot of people, but I just try to be as honest as possible, even to my own detriment. You know, like I, I did that episode of IRL on Monday where I was like, I'm thinking of shutting things down. And, you know, and people are like, it's unprofessional, Tim. And I'm like, you know, man, I'm, I'm a transparent guy. People don't like it, I guess. But I, I think it's important that people know what is going on behind the scenes and people have an idea. And if that means that there are some people that can't can't handle it, don't like it, are mad at me for it, it's just. I, I feel like, look, if it compromises someone's safety, if they've asked me to talk about it, I won't. But I will say this. I think Joe Rogan has been set on voting for Trump for some time. I don't know personally. He's never said anything to me about it. But I I, I feel like you can't look at a man who is so well versed on the issues and could ask these questions who would then consider voting for Kamala Harris. So when he was saying that he he thought RFK Jr. was the only guy that made sense, I I don't believe it for a second. And so I suppose to a degree it it may be that I am imputing the honor of Joe by saying such a thing. No, I think Joe is trying to be a leader. And 
a lot of people have criticized Joe saying he should have had Trump on a long time ago. And I'm like, listen, there are a lot of people who watch Rogan. And I, I, I've got a good friend of mine who I've, I've known for 20 plus years, uh, for 20 years, 20 years, who is a woke liberal, but more default liberal. Not if, if I were to sit down with this person and we have, we've, we, you know, we were hanging out and talk politics, they're going to be like, I don't know any, any of this stuff, but they're going to be posting on social media, all of the typical woke stuff when it happens. But they're still good friends of mine because they're not super involved in politics. It, it's kind of funny. If they were, they'd be like Tim Pool's far right or whatever, or they'd be asking me questions because I have friends who deeply involved in politics lost their minds. And it's kind of sad. But this friend of mine is just like, no, I don't know, whatever. Like, cool, you do a show. I guess it's political. I'm not super into politics. But I know for a fact this person watches Rogan all the time, every episode. And Joe is a middle of the road guy that can can speak in a way that doesn't offend mm -hmm. the sensibilities of mm -hmm. a default liberal. Yep. Exactly. Trump just went on Rogan's watches. show for three hours, yeah. and Joe basically said all of these Democrat talking points are absurd right at the 11th hour. Woo! Come on! Kip? It, it, it sounds like, like, like Kip. Literally 11 days to go like to the election. Like he's talking about Kip. Yeah. yeah. Now I think, what, 10 days? Exactly. So my friends that I know that are watching that show are, are being swayed. They're hearing for the first time. If Joe comes out and just says, I'm a MAGA guy, this is a Trump podcast, not literally, but it's like, yeah, you got to vote for Trump. And he does it a year ago. Then these people are going to be like, oh, it's just it's Fox News all over again. The attacks are going to start pouring in and it may actually dissuade middle of the road people and even liberals from listening to a conversation that could benefit them. I think it, we are much better served by Joe saying, keep me out of the politics. Let me tell you why this thing that's happening right now is, is important. Now, I've thought the same thing, too. Many people have said, Tim, you should you should not endorse Trump. You should have remained the, the milk toast fence sitter and never. Yeah, but I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. I've always just tried to be honest in how I feel about things and what I think about things. They're different, by the way. And that is when I decided to vote for Trump is because I honestly looked at his, his agenda and I said, boy, I'd be a hypocrite if I came out and pretended like I didn't support this for the sake of like trying to sway moderates. And there are a lot of people that I see posts in the comments. They're like, I used to watch Tim, but then he. Real, I think that might be because he's a. Because he's a celebrity, you're used to the celebrities getting exposed for something. So I, I get why you're thinking that, because now it's getting to the point what celebrity is going to get exposed next for something. You know that, and there's been a lot of a lot of like alternative negative about Joe that you probably haven't even just been obviously watching, just listening to things and people just talking badly about it, just. Constantly mm -hmm. saying bad things about Joe because they want bad things to come out about Joe. Yeah. He's another guy that's been around a long time, been vetted for a lot of stuff that it'd be weird if something came out about him. But then again, I wouldn't be surprised because I, with any of these celebrities, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But then again, Creel, you're your own person. If you don't vibe with somebody, you don't vibe. Yeah, of course. So I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got yeah. your feelings about your. About yeah. You, if you don't vibe with somebody, you don't vibe with but people have always said, had wake vibes about Joe, even since when he was back. Yeah, there. like yeah. there's some things he says. I'm I I'm like okay. Then some things he says. I'm like yeah, not really with it. But like, do I do I go out of my way to watch everything from Joe Rogan? No, I haven't watched all of it. No, but do I've I think he's a sensible guy that makes sense? Yeah, it's just like with me, uh, um, with uh, Andrew Tate. That guy freaking bothered crap out of me. I'm like I don't freaking like this guy at all. So then I'm like I'm gonna do a little research, you know. Because all the stuff that they were putting out there was bad. The highlighting, the 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 clips and everything, it was just bad. They were talking bad mm -hmm. about him and stuff like that. And then I started to see other, uh, I started I research him and then I started to see a full length of videos of him. I'm like, wow. I mean, some of the stuff that he said I don't agree, but there was a lot of things that he said that I agree. So it's like, you know, so you will probably have to do research and see if you like the guy or not. That, that's 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 like, what I did. Tate says a lot of stuff that makes sense. That makes sense, but then there's other stuff that's like. He's not a guy you really want to hang <laughs> what around. The fuck, yeah, man? Yeah, yeah, you know, like I don't know. He seems like the kind of guy that would kind of hit, take advantage of you for quick buck. But says a lot of good things. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh. Became full MAGA because he supports Trump. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So, so so be it. So I can say this. I genuinely think Joe is going to be voting for Donald Trump and has been for some time. But I think and I'm not trying to impugn the honor in no way. I think he's trying to be a responsible leader because he knows he is. 
Mm-hmm. Joe often says, I'm just a guy. I just talk to my friends. You know, I don't want to be this. I don't be, I'm not a smart guy. I'm just some dumb guy on the internet. I, I got to tell you, man, ain't nobody buying that. I mean, the left might lie, but we all know that, that Joe is an extremely smart dude. He's an extremely smart guy. He's a hardworking guy. He's a respectable guy. And he is one of the, he, he is literally the premier thought leader of our generation. I am not saying that because I'm trying to puff him up or anything. I'm saying let's be definitive in this one. The biggest podcast in the world, the king of podcasting, the godfather of modern podcasting, no question. Starting it off, and there, there are people who started podcasting before him, but he's the guy who revolutionized it and made it massive. Yeah. I, yeah, you I listen agree. to the way he yeah. talks about things. He's inquisitive. He investigates. He hits the nail on the head. Some people say the Walter Cronkite of our generation, whatever that may be. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying with that Creole, but I've heard a, I've heard too many good stories about Joe going and doing things for other people that it's like I, I'm gonna have to really see some proof to see something negative. Damn, about Chris, when did Chris Stevens go able to kill him? So that's 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 wild. I think that was a couple years ago. Damn, years I remember that story. I think I remember that story. Damn, I didn't know shit. But you see what I mean? Usually, when there's stories about somebody doing that, you can they're just there's stories of them being mean to people, like Ellen DeGeneres. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. When it comes with stuff like Joe, like he did for Tim, taking care of his medical stuff. I've heard too many good stories about Joe taking care of people around him or just helping out people that needed help. Yeah, it's the same thing with Trump. Yeah. I didn't know none of this stuff until we, um, we listened more, like, listened to the podcast, listened to when people are asking him questions and stuff like that. Like, they don't put that out there. They only put out the stuff that he, you know, sometimes he says, you know, certain things. Because it was never from Joe talking about the good stuff he does. It's always about the other people saying that Rogan helped them out. Yeah. It's not Joe ever bragging about Mm. the stuff that he did. It's like Tim telling the story or somebody Mm -hmm. else telling the story of what he had done for him. And then the same thing with Trump. Like Israel Daniel said something about how he's helped him out. Other UFC fighters have said stuff where Joe had come to their defense and said something or done something behind the scenes for him. It's little things like that where it's I, I I get the feeling you're talking about Creole, but there's just too much stuff that from behind the scenes where Joe has taken care of and helped people. There's a lot of mean, nasty people where you don't hear from behind the scenes they were helping people. Like when you hear stories about Alec Baldwin, it's not that he was a good guy taking care of people behind the scenes. Mostly every Alec Baldwin story is him being a complete dick or prick to somebody. That's like it was uh, so. When someone like tries to, unless you got some like concrete evidence, when someone tries to say like, "Oh, Eminem doing everybody dirty," I'm like, "Yeah, you gotta, you gotta prove that." I'm like, "Cause it, Joe's Nas getting- ain't saying nothing, Jay ain't saying, Kendrick ain't saying, yeah. Cube ain't saying nothing, Wayne yeah. ain't saying." I'm like, "So who's saying it?" Yeah, Lord Jamar. Like, exactly. You know you gotta- what I mean? But that you see what I mean, Creel? I, I would understand more if there was more stories of how Joe is a prick behind the scenes. Then I'd be like, yeah, I can see something. It's like out. Tyler Perry. You get conflicting stories about Tyler Perry. Now. Yeah. Yeah, you do. One moment, some, Tyler Perry is helping someone. And then the other moment, he like screws somebody over. Right. So it's, I, it, I get conflicting feelings about Tyler yeah. Perry. I, exactly. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have, you don't hear conflicting well, stories I about heard, Joe. I heard, well, maybe I should investigate more about it, but I heard enough the, of, of Ella DeGeneres being an asshole to every to everybody, mm-hmm. uh, the workers, the, sta- the staff, right, right, you know, and then how the way she wants certain things to be done, but she's nasty about it. That's I don't know. Not for nothing, you hear a lot of that about Kamala Harris too, how she treats her staff and the people. Mm. You want to know how a person is? Look at their staff turnover rate. That's a good point. You want to see how mean and nasty most of these politicians are? Look at their uh, turnover rate. No, I have not watched the Vince McMahon. I, fuck Vince McMahon. Well, the Vince McMahon's a piece of shit. Like, which is sad to brilliant say. Brilliant promoter. Great entertainer. You gotta say, brilliant promoter. Behind the closed build doors. Business, piece of shit guy. Human yeah. Being. You can be you can be good at what you do and still be a piece of shit human being. Yeah. It's not about me saying, oh man, I'm gonna puff this guy up. I've already been on his show, I think, four times. Like, I don't need, I don't need to say nice things about him for any kind of benefit to myself. The dude helped me out. I'm grateful. But I think it's a reality. That's why it is such a big deal when Joe Rogan has Donald Trump on his show and everyone knows it. This is the premier platform. And it reaches so many people. Me, you know what I think, honestly? 
I was thinking about this and, and where I am in the size of my show. I'm over at politics, man. I'm politics and culture. Joe talks about MMA, sports. He can talk about things all across the board. We don't do that here, and it's just not my passion. I feel like this show, the work that I do, is a political news offshoot of what Joe created. And um, maybe maybe that might sound, uh, I don't know, some people like cocky or whatever, but no, look, I had 300,000 subscribers. I had 200 on youtube.com slash Timcast. And on this channel, I had 120. Joe invited me on the show. I said, Joe, look, I'm, you know, that we, we had, uh, uh, there was like, I'd been booked before. I'd been canceled twice. I said, I'm never going to ask you to come on. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to come on. You can invite me if you ever feel like it. Cause I, I would, uh, you know, be great, of course. And then Joe invited me on and then he invited me on again. And that instantly exploded this show massively. I gained 600,000 subs in, in, in a, in a couple of weeks on one channel, it put me over a million collective subs. And then within a few months after that, I had an official 1 million on youtube.com slash Timcast. And uh, that is largely the Joe Rogan audience that you guys became viewers of these channels. And so this is people who watch <laughs> Joe, who cared about the political conversations that I had, decided to watch this show, probably still do watch Joe, but they watch him for everything else. So that's kind of how I feel about it. Then there are other comedy shows that got launched by Joe hosting these conversations. It's really incredible. I wonder what the, what, what's next for this, for this reality and, and where we go. I really don't know. But I think I'm always going to be a news and culture guy. And, uh, you know, that is what it is. And there's going to be other people that do comedy and everything else. And Joe hits all of it. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? But uh, I'm eternally grateful. I'm, I, will, uh, I am and always will be a fan of Joe, not just because uh, he's helped me out tremendously and he's a good dude, but because he hosts the best show. I wish, I genuinely do, I could be half as good as Joe Rogan at hosting these shows, but I'm just me. For all the criticisms, by all means, send them my way. Uh, and that being said, I wish I could be half as good as Matt Walsh, especially with Am I Racist? But I'm always just going to be me. I'm going to do what I can do, and I'm going to shout out those guys who do it better. But uh, I'll always try my best, and I'll always shout out uh, Joe and Trump for hosting what is the, the best podcast uh, I've ever seen. Now, I can tell you, I've seen podcasts about ghosts and Bigfoot that are more entertaining, that, enth that are enthralling. But I just mean to have a former president tell you about the nitty gritty deep down of these conversations to get an in-depth look for three hours is something we could only have dreamed of. I'll wrap it up yeah. there. We got more segments coming up today. Look at me working on the weekends. <coughs> Follow me on X and Instagram <laughs> at TimCast. Leave us a good review on the audio podcast site if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Share the show with everyone you know. Become a member at TimCast.com. Cast Brew Coffee is where you buy coffee. Gasper.com. Thanks so much for hanging out. We'll see you all in the next segment. Bye, Timmy. Bye, Timmy. Fair enough. You want to know about the news and stuff like that? And you don't oh. feel like you're being lied to? You should go and Follow visit Tim Cast. I, oh, he's the only one that I really like. Really go like for. I like watching Crowder and everything, but I know he's super biased towards the towards the right. I yeah, know, he is. I know every. Of course, yeah, he, is. Yeah. He, he he admits that too. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't try to be anything he's not. He admits yeah. that he's got a right bias. He's going to give you the news from the right bias. But he's a comedy show. He even says that he's not a news show. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I enjoy watching Crowder because he's funny, but I don't go to him for all of my news. I go to a guy like Tim because he gives you right mm -hmm. down the middle. Yep. He's a non-bias. And he's going to pull up That's all good. mostly left-leaning news sources as he's trying to explain to you what's going on. It's not like he's pulling up just Fox News going through Fox and telling yeah, you what I Fox did. No, it goes deep in there. No, he'll bring up M sure, NBC, though. CBS. He'll bring up ABC News. He'll bring up The Hill. He'll bring up Politico. Thanks for stopping in. Spend the time with us today, y'all. Hit that notification bell and give it a share because it always helps the channel out. Please, and thank you. See you guys in the next one. Better, y'all. Peace. Bye. Oh,